everyone. Welcome to the third in our three-part series, Harnessing Tech to Connect. I'm Maureen Williams. I'm the Director of Care Navigation for Four Seasons, the Care You Trust, and I'm honored to be of service. And those of us that have been on the planning and implementation group for these series, we've learned so much and we've enjoyed working with all of our speakers. We have another wonderful presentation today. I have a few things to share with you. First of all, this series is a collaboration of the Land of Sky Regional Council's Family Caregiver Program and Project CARE, the AARP North Carolina in the Mountain Region, Four Seasons the Care You Trust, the Charles George VA Medical Center, Bob Krollman with Skyheart Consulting, and the Mayhex Social Bridging Project. And we'll hear from both Bob and the Mayhex Social Bridging Project very shortly. Now, during the program, you will see in the chat box a link to the survey that we have for each of these programs. We think your feedback is invaluable. So please click on the link and share what you want to share with us. And we really take everything um, very seriously and we want to integrate your comments and your perspectives. Now, another benefit of entering um, completing the survey is that you're entered into a door prize drawing for some really wonderful um, technology devices to help in caregiving, including a pocket talker hearing device, digital and talking thermometers, robotic animals, those robotic cats and dogs are awesome, and door alarms, some really neat products there. So Please enter the survey. I'll remind you again, but that link is going to be in the chat box on the programs, on whatever program um, platform you're viewing. Now, given that we do have devices that we're going to be showing, I do have to share with you a disclaimer on behalf of AARP North Carolina, and that is we are not endorsing a specific product and take no responsibility for the products that are recommended by our speakers. So thank you, but you're still going to learn a lot of great information. Well, now I'm going to ask um, our wonderful behind the scenes pal, Rebecca Chaplin, to bring in our speaker for the Mayhex Social Bridging Project. This is Daniel Simmons, and Daniel, you'll want to unmute yourself. Hey there. Um, and we want, hello, friend. And we've been promoting this project on every, uh, every program that we've done. But please tell us what Social Bridging Project is. It's very, very exciting. Yeah, so the Mayhex Social Bridging Project is a very important service in that it brings together people who are feeling um, perhaps lonely or, or forgotten a little bit, uh, elder folk or infirm folk who are not getting a lot of communication with other people. It helps us as UNCA interns to communicate with them, not just for social connection, but also in case they have needs that need to be met, perhaps uh, they need to contact Meals on Wheels or they need to learn how to use a cell phone or they need to learn how to use a YouTube or um, a social media platform, then we as interns can either assist them or direct them in the direction of someone else that can assist them to have their needs be met. That's fabulous. And you were sharing a couple of examples of, of how you've been able to help some of your uh, seniors, uh, the, the, the distance. You wanna share some examples with the group here? I think they're fabulous. Sure, Maureen, I'm happy to. Yeah, so um, I have some skills in terms of building and repair. And so I was able to help a lady. She, she um, doesn't have a lot of mobility. Her balance is questionable and she has a wheelchair ramp. And so when she was walking down the wheelchair ramps on two different opportunities, she happened to fall over. And so all I did was um, I had a bunch of extra shingles, roofing shingles at my house. So I brought my tools over and applied the shingles to the ramp, which gave a, a rough surface. So it was safer for her to walk up and down. Um, so that was just one of the situations that I've been able to help in, in a little different facet. <clears throat> That's fabulous. And, you know, what a wonderful feeling for you to know that you just ensured safety, right? You just reduced her fall risk there. That's tremendous. Yeah, the, the feeling that I get is really, you know, just that I'm, my skills are being used and that makes me really happy. You know, between that or just like cleaning her house to remove fall risks in the house as well. Uh, it just makes me feel really good to know that someone's life is safer because of just a little bit of effort that I can put forth. 
Absolutely. Now, for those of you who are watching here, you can see that we've posted on the banner an email. If you want to connect through this project by being a recipient or a volunteer, and a phone number, 828-771-3445. Now, Daniel, is there any cost to the elder, to the recipient, to participate? I'm sorry, could you repeat that question? Is there any cost to the recipient, to the elder? Oh. Absolutely no cost whatsoever. Yeah, this is all volunteer run uh, UNCA interns, no cost. Isn't that wonderful? We've got this in this community, y'all. This is fabulous. And Daniel, as I recall, you all focus primarily in Buncombe County. Is yeah. that right? I'm sorry? You focus primarily in Buncombe County. Is that That's right? That's true. Primarily in Buncombe County is where I focused. Uh, I've been working with a lady who lives in Candler, and now I'm out in Fletcher and just kind of mm -hmm. traveling around. Next week, we're going to be delivering some food starting on Monday. We're going to be delivering food to people who can't get around as well. But yes, primarily we are in Buncombe County. Great. So as you all can tell, those of you who are watching, Daniel is actively helping someone right now. So That's true. It's, it's interesting. <laughs> It's really interesting, Maureen, because this is an elder friend of mine who I've known for probably 15 years, and uh, we used to be neighbors, and we've just been close. We're friends, and she just turned a little strangely and broke her hip in three places, uh, so she just came out of a rehab facility yesterday in the hospital the day before, and so I'm going to be at her home the next four days just helping with her activities of daily living, make sure that the environment is safe. Fabulous. Well, for those of you who are watching, please make note of the email to find out more information about the Social Bridging Project, the phone number 828-771-3445, and perhaps an amazing senior intern volunteer just like Daniel will be able to help you too. So thank you, Daniel. I know you've got a really busy life and a busy day, but bless you, and thank you so much for helping our seniors in the community. Bless you guys. Isn't that exciting, y'all? Just some real, real time, exciting things to happen, our seniors in the community and reduce their isolation. All right. Well, we're going to learn, besides the, the more human, the high touch ways, some of the high tech ways that we can help our, our loved ones, our seniors, uh, those that are in the community. We're going to find some high tech ways through our good friend, Bob Krollman. Bob has been a very integral part. Hey, Bob, of our whole planning and invitation of these two series. And Bob has an exciting resume, guys. And he doesn't know I'm going to do this, but I'm going to share a little bit about him, okay? <laughs> I know, Bob, but it's really exciting. He, um, he has uh, degrees in uh, community health counseling and rehab counseling. So that makes him, first of all, uh, very uh, competent to share what he's about to share. He's worked in this field for rehab counseling for over 40 years. Years. And then he spent many, many of those years with the um, Federal Assistive Technology Act program in the Commonwealth of Virginia, where I used to live, Bob, by the way. Um, and he has such an amazing breadth and depth of knowledge for assistive technology. And we here in Western North Carolina are very fortunate that he chose to retire here. So he's helping us help others in the community. And um, we've been working on his presentation. And from our first session that we had in our first series, Bob had some great things to share that really caught people's attention. So, Bob, I'm turning it over to you. Let's see what you have to share with us today. Thank you. Well, let's see if the technology works. That's always something. Good, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm going to talk about remote caregiving. Um, when it just in general when when you're not with the care recipient um do i have control or not rebecca do you have I'm trying to figure out how to sometimes the technology works and sometimes it doesn't okay this is the disclaimer it, it's what was said before, but we put that in just because it's the it's important to do. Okay, um, this is um, this is part of that harnessing Tech to Connect series. It's this is remote caregiving, caring when you are away. 
So what we're talking about is enabling technology, technology that um, does several things in, in kind of a general sense. It's, um, hang on, let me get my, Promotes, it promotes independence, safety, and peace of mind. And that's both for, uh, it's for everybody involved in this situation. It monitors and supports routine activities, ADLs, health and safety. Uh, it's unobtrusive and intuitive, supportive of social engagement, and supports health by monitoring things such as the home environment, medication management, eating, uh, all the basic things one does in one day. Um, so what we're talking about is to maximize the independence of the care recipient. And we do that with a, a whole series of technologies. And then for the caregiver, we're really kind of talking about in general, if you're just not right there, if you're not in the room with somebody, you could be in another part of the house, you're at work, you're running errands around town, or um, you're in another location, another state, another part of the city, the county. Um, that A lot of this stuff works, um, you know, works with um, that. Okay, so the functions... We're going to create a safe environment. And next slide. It's attention to lighting. These are some basics. Uh, reduce tripping hazards and falls. That also includes removing obstacles, moving furniture, taking out throw rugs, uh, cords that might be in a, a walking area, adding handrails and grab bars. And then access to the home, in and out, and um, also using technology to provide access for wellness checks. If you're not there and you need somebody to check on uh, the person you're caring for, and it does it does serve to reduce the anxiety of the caregiver and the care recipient because you can observe, monitor, and communicate in real time. Next. So this is just some basic things. I just want to make sure people understand that as as we get older, uh, our our vision isn't able to see as clearly, and home lighting is important uh, to to ensure safety. So you know, lights on stairs, whether it's interior, or exterior, walkways, hallways, um, a lot of times. Uh, lighting that, that comes on with motion detection or comes on with, uh, you know, dawn to dusk kind of photo cell stuff. The, um, the next slide, this is home safety stuff. It was, I was, I was looking for handrails and just realized that there are all kinds of different handrails that are out there in addition to the, the kind that just go on the wall. They're ones that help up the stairs that rather than fasten to the stair tread can fasten to a support uh, structure on adjacent to the wall. This is pretty useful if you have one or two steps uh, either in the house into a, like a sunken living room or one or two steps to come in from the outside. There are just a lot of different styles. Um, the next slide is general home access and safety. And this really, uh, I just really want to make the point that it's the technology, the, the locks that can be controlled remotely uh, are very inexpensive and readily accessible and pretty easy to install. Um, other thing, another thing is uh, smoke and, and carbon monoxide alarms that um, actually tell the people that the carbon dioxide level may be up or smoke uh, is detected. And it can be some, some actually some of the devices, uh, you can record uh, warnings in your own voice, which sometimes uh, helps to eliminate confusion. Um, 
the next slide is just a picture telephones that if someone needs to uh, get a hold of fire or police or doctor or you um, and they more easily recognize images, you can put your picture in the phone and um, you can uh, program the phone to call your number. Um, it's pretty useful. This is an example of uh, cell phones that do the same thing. Uh, if someone has a cell phone, uh, the, the, the caller's image can come up. Uh, or if you go to search to call somebody, you can do that by uh, the picture placing their number in the favorites uh, section of the phone. Uh, in-home monitoring is another thing that um, we want to look at. Uh, the device on the right is interior to the home. It it's, can be used to uh, <coughs> excuse me, access that people are, if they're sleeping, if they're in their room, if someone tends to get up uh, and they have trouble navigating or they're you're afraid they're going to fall, uh, this is actually something that um, is pretty useful. Uh, one of the things, a lot of the, the monitoring devices are can be used for uh, older folks or uh, you know little kids. So uh, there's just a range of these types of devices, and they're pretty inexpensive. The item on the left is a, a monitoring system produced by Clarity. And it, it allows you to, to um, have several uh, different functions. It, if someone rings the doorbell, it will light up the doorbell icon. Uh, or if, if uh, someone wants to get a hold of you, uh, it, can, it, can, uh, it can let whoever's monitoring the, the equipment uh, be aware of that. So this goes, this unit goes in, can go into the, the room or, you know, next to, say, somebody's chair uh, that the care recipient sits there and has a, a doorbell. And that can notify, if you're in another part of the house, there's the lower left-hand corner is a, a similar box that you can just put. Um, maybe in your home office or wherever you spend a lot of your time if you're not right in the same room with the person and it it will let you know uh, what what's going on it also is pretty handy if they the person needs to get a hold of you and and rather than come looking for you um, you can just get a wireless door doorbell a transmitter they're eight ten bucks to Home Depot and program that to, to work with the unit. And then the little tiny thing in the middle is uh, the same as the receiving unit. It goes on your belt. You can wear it, and it just will uh, inform you of, of any of those uh, those functions. So the, the next thing I just want to mention briefly. Hey, hey Bob. Uh, for peace of mind. Bob. Yeah. Yep. Before you go on, some questions, if you don't mind. Um, I, I don't get mind lots at all. of questions. Thank you, friend. I get a lot of questions about these in-home monitoring units. And um, where, first of all, where can you get these? The the monitoring unit. I, at the end of this, I posted a, a just as I was going through and, and double checking these still exist. I put a bunch of websites. It's just a list on the last page, and we can make that available. the The Clarity system, which is the unit on the left hand side of the screen, is produced by Clarity, uh, C L A R. ITY and it's it's really they do a lot of uh, stuff for people that are deaf and hard of hearing but there's application for that kind of unit they also uh, produce uh, one of the large button phones and portable uh, portable phones with with buttons with pictures on them and 
those a lot of times are real useful because you can control the volume of the receiver, the handset. Uh, they a lot of times have uh, a uh, flashing light that the rings and um, that that can be very useful. Sure, thank you. And then the other one does does these these require much. Um, Skill set for installation. That's another call I get regularly. No, if I can do it, anybody can. Um, <laughs> it, it, it is it is Bob proof, as they like to call it in the house, in our house. Yeah. Then I can't really screw it up. Good. And do some of these that you um, are going to have on the web page, on the resource page, do they have? monitoring applications available because families like to know that too sometimes can they be sure I mean, that, uh, we'll go into that a little bit later okay i stole your thunder thanks bob no, it's thundering <laughs> outside my house right now you're going to have it i hope the power okay. doesn't go out okay the, the next screen is um it's th these are are some simple devices to secure cabinets. This is a little uh, magnetic lock for a, a cabinet door that uh, the, the device that the, the fingers are on is, is just a, a piece of plastic with a magnet inside and you have to hold it up to the door and it releases the, the catch so you can uh, control who goes in and out of that. The other the other side of the, the screen, uh, this is a new term I learned, it's called a confounding door lock. And what it, what it is, it, if you don't want somebody to inadvertently wander to the basement stairs and open the door, they might trip and go down, or there are things down there you don't want them to do, uh, you just install this. And when it's closed, it just looks like a white latch. And all you do is kind of swing the outside, uh, the right side of that swings out, and then the door can operate. And down below in the, the other device with the keypad on it is a, a lock that you can install uh, pretty easily. And then um, you have some kind of... Uh, access code that you can punch in. Again, it just kind of keeps people, contains people in areas that you uh, you understand. It also can be used if, if someone uh, has a tendency to wander and go out of the house. Uh, there are a lot of different things to do, but this is something that you can use for that. Um, the next slide is a little more about wandering. Um, Again, you see the clarity device, the lower part. There is a, you, you put a sending unit uh, like on the, uh, on the door. It's a magnetic sending unit. Uh, and when the door opens, it breaks the, the little code and sets off an alarm. And it can either be an alarm at the door itself or it can and go to a different kind of unit. Uh, the upper right-hand corner is... Uh, there are pads that, uh, when they're stepped on, they send off an alarm. Uh, so if someone's uh, going, you know, heading out or going somewhere they shouldn't be, uh, it can let you know. And then the other thing with the in the middle of the screen is a just it's a rug that gives the illusion of a, a hole. And a lot of times, folks won't uh, step on that they won't go to the door. And that's a pretty inexpensive and unique way to look at, at something like that, you know, a, a way to control who goes out. And more things in the next slide. Uh, there's a, a stop sign. You just put that barrier up uh, and it keeps from it. A lot of times folks can recognize that. Um, the item to the left is a mural that fits on a door and looks like a bookshelf rather than a door. And that can uh, slow people down. And on the right is a, a relatively new kind of device that um, slips into the, the shoe, a sneaker or some kind of loafer. And it, it is a uh, GPS tracking device. 
So you can uh, you can control where you know your knowledge of where the person is. Um, there are many alarm systems that uh, you can tether uh, someone to a perimeter, you know, the yard of the house or, you know, if they go beyond, it's almost like an invisible fence. And that's, again, that's useful if people tend to get distracted and they wander around. And all these devices, or a lot of them, are accessible by cell phone or, or uh, they're, they're Wi-Fi enabled so that you can monitor and check on things uh, again, if you're out and about, uh, you can link them to your, your smartphone or your computer, your iPad, uh, any number of things that you can be in kind of constant contact with monitoring things. The next slide is just, uh, you know, touching on uh, smart home devices that, you know, there's there are a lot of alternatives out there, uh, and it just they're not that expensive and a lot of times peace of mind uh they're that in itself is pretty valuable uh the the north carolina assistive technology program staff that did last week's presentation can certainly talk to you about um smart home devices uh google and uh alexa you know, those kinds of devices are just making communication and monitoring so much easier and and more affordable, more universal. Um, next device. I want to go a little bit just to kitchen safety because um, on the next slide, the, the, this, the kitchen and the bathroom are, are very dangerous places. And if um someone isn't careful or, or doesn't have the concentration or the attending skills to cook or prepare meals uh, there are a lot of devices that you can add on that can control uh, if the stove is on it doesn't leave a stove on indefinitely uh, the, the three devices, the stove guard, the stop kitchen fires in the lower left-hand corner are all devices that you can add on to a stove and it will keep, um, you can have settings so that there are, it reduces fire risks. The item in the lower left-hand corner is called a safety burner and it only heats up to 450 degrees. Uh, so it eliminates a lot of uh, fire hazards and uh, more severe burns. Um, the next slide. Uh, this is this is actually something that I, I think if uh, you're not there at the house or you want to give uh, people uh, care recipients a little more sense of freedom and autonomy. Uh, these are some examples of uh, microwaves with remote control. They're readily available. They're not much more expensive than uh, the, the ones that you can install, you know, over the over the stove. Some are controlled uh, with Alexa. Some are controlled from your smartphone. So if you uh, you 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 have to be away when there's a meal time. You can call and, and and check with the person to see are you are you hungry? Um, you're, I'll call you back when your lunch is ready. It'll be in the microwave, and you can uh, you can actually turn the microwave on and control it from your phone. Uh, the other thing that you can do on the lower right hand corner is a programmable microwave and you have 10, 10 settings that you can uh, pre-program, I mean, I mean, heat your soup or, uh, you know, leftover stew or uh, an egg dish. You see these a lot in restaurants. Uh, like Starbucks and whatever, they just put you whatever you want, heat it up and put it and press one button and it's done. 
the orange thing in the lower left hand corner those are tactile dots they're small rubber dots that are adhesive on the back and you can put those on say a microwave control and say when you want you know when you're hungry for soup or whatever just go press the orange button on the microwave and it it's a way to ensure that people are, are putting the right, pushing the right button and again it gives even greater sense of autonomy when you're when you're uh, working with someone that may have some cognitive issues the next slide uh, i have a real uh, concern a lot of times based on personal experience of my folks with stovetop safety and there are very inexpensive ways to control fire now if i did this right rebecca can you push the button in the middle of the the, the top it's a video i don't know whether it'll work or not Look at that. Technology comes alive. This is just, uh, it's a demonstration of these canisters that you can attach either to the range hood, which are the devices on the left, or these cans are magnetic and they can go on like, like under a microwave. They go over the, above the burner. They just, they're just magnetic. They're very inexpensive. And when flames uh, if there's a stovetop fire it will release a, uh, a flame retardant and it'll put out the fire it's again uh, Gibbons uh, the Gibbons estate has in the, every one of their units has this in there I don't know whether you can shut that off or not Maybe not. All right. So, the, you know, that's stovetop safety. Again, inexpensive. If you worry about uh, people, you know, burning down the house or burning themselves, uh, it's a very inexpensive way to get a little bit of peace of mind. Um, the next thing I want to talk about a little bit is medication management. Uh, this, uh, there's a, a website called epill.com and they just have all these pretty amazing devices you you preload something like this um, and the little rings in the lower left hand part of that uh, part of the screen are dosage reminders so if you do two doses a day or three doses a day, you put that on then you fill the compartment up you lock that and it automatically uh, advances when it's time to uh, take medication and it eliminates it gives people a pretty easy way to to take their meds and you can get these devices with electronic prompts and reminders and then it will advance uh, to the next uh, it'll it won't allow you to double dose uh, which can be important the next um the next device is, is the the top one is the one that that does that it has a timer you can set it um it's really pretty useful there's also uh the lower left hand corner is uh, that type of device that uh will uh allow uh the, they can review dosage records and, uh, you know, make sure that people are taking what they need to, that they comply with their medication schedule. Um, and this is useful for, audit, for not only the care recipient, for the caregiver. A lot of time, times caregivers are older, and if they don't remember to take medication they need, they might, might have a medical incident that takes them away from the house, and then you have a crisis. Uh, you need to, to find a caregiver and you have the additional worry of, of being ill. Um, so th these are just 
relatively inexpensive ways to um, to kind of ensure medication compliance. The interesting thing is, <coughs> excuse me, these devices five years ago when they first came out were very expensive because they they used Wi-Fi. Now with smartphones and everything, it's very easy to and very inexpensive to get one of these devices. Hey, Bob, it's Maureen. Uh, can I give a quick testimony about these medication management sure. sensors? We have a client who has early dementia and lives alone, and we make arrangements for her to have one of the ones, uh, like you saw on the previous slide, that had the templates. Uh, the alarms are set to go off at a certain time, and it, it's a pretty annoying alarm until she takes her medications, and it works it's keeping her at home uh, independently and living alone for a little bit longer. So I thought I'd give a quick testimony for how that works. It, it, it really, and once you get, uh, prepare it the first time, it makes sense. <laughs> the first time, if you're not um, used to this sort of thing, may be a bit overwhelming, but they, they really are working. So there's a quick testimony, Bob. Thank you. There, a lot of these devices, um, they, they're used useful with, with people that may have some cognitive impairment secondary to a stroke or some kind of acquired brain injury where they their memory isn't um, isn't what it should be and they can't remember where they took the dose this kind of eliminates that and also the previous slides with the meals and everything um, sometimes they don't remember that they eat and then they overeat or, you know, eat and then get ill. And it, it can be very uh, disarm, disconcerting when that happens. So there are a lot of things that look at, at memory issues for personal management. Uh, this is another device. This is a really inexpensive way to uh, track medication. Uh, it's an alarm that you, you put, it's the cap for the, the pill and it, it makes a noise, it alarms, um, and it will flash and it'd be annoying, like Maureen said, uh, until it's open automatically. It's a daily kind of alarm. And you can, uh, it also does the missed dose uh, indicator, which is, again, kind of critical. Uh, these things are real inexpensive, and they come in either single or three packs for very little, very little money for uh, what they do. Um, next dose, next next dose, next slide is just some other uh, pill management things. Upper left hand corner is something that you can put in your pocket. It, it, I think it holds four doses. So if, if you're going out, you can uh, make sure the person has that or you bring that along. Um, the, the, lower, the lower center is a four dose pill box that has an alarm built in. And then the upper right is uh, same kind of thing, but uh, a full week's dosage. Um, the next slide just is, you know, just a couple things I just want to mention because I think it's important that if someone goes into the wash their hands, if the water temperature is too hot, they can scald themselves and that can be, you know, kind of a medical crisis. So these are, anti scald belts are very inexpensive. They don't allow uh, water to get that hot. Uh, they're available in bath and shower and sinks and faucets uh, throughout the house. Also, if you have the capacity to uh, turn down uh, the, the temperature at the water heater itself, that, that's another way to handle that, that concern. Um, again, the bathroom, bathroom and kitchen are the most dangerous places. So just a word to folks that just non-slip bathroom mats uh, left or for tubs and 
for rugs out you put the inside and outside of the tub can prevent slipping and then on the right hand side are uh, they're mats that go into the shower they're designed to fit over the drain uh, again just important um, grab bars and lighting in the bathroom are amazing um, and they're they're unobtrusive the upper left hand corner the woman that's holding that that grab bar that's a a forty dollar item you can even get that at bed bath and beyond and it just clamps to the tub and can support someone just you know getting in and out of the tub um they're sliding shower chairs uh, bath chairs that are in the center of the top the bottom one are those are grab bars that fold up and they can when they're not in use and then fold down uh, when they're needed and that's something if someone has issues getting up and down from the commode it's a pretty handy unobtrusive uh, type of grab bar the next um, slide is is just really it's a great site for um i was looking for tracking uh devices uh, just so you know where somebody is um, you know we all know about the uh alarms the devices that you can wear um uh, help i fall and can't get up kind of thing uh, this is a little more sophisticated and works with uh, tracking on your phone. Uh, it's pretty uh, reasonably priced. And this website itself has a bunch of other items you can look at, other services. So that I urge people to uh, take a look at that. Just search on that site if you're looking for things. And, and with any of this stuff, I'm available to talk to you by uh, phone. Uh, if you have questions or you want to problem solve a particular situation, because everybody's situation is unique. The setting, the person you're working with, the level of support you want to provide, financial considerations. And there's usually alternatives at, at every level to address every one of those things. This is just kind of a uh, looking, this is another add-on. This is just for wandering and includes um, tethering, which is if someone goes outside the area, an alarm is set. You know, you can do like 20 feet from the, the sending unit. And it can, if somebody goes off, you can, uh, the caregiver gets notified. It's just a, uh, an additional feature that a lot of these uh, devices, uh, you know, it's available on these devices. The next slide is um, these are just uh, things that you wear, pendants, watches that can allow you your person to be tracked. Um, it's a little bit like low jack and people, but the alternative of people wandering away. Uh, from their routine and their medication schedule is very scary for all of us, for them, for you. Uh, the the thing that I'm pretty excited about is the device in the left hand side. It's a adhesive band aid that you can put on somebody, and it has the same kind of tracking ability. Uh, they're they usually last up to a month. They have a separate power supply. And they they can't be taken, removed by the person inadvertently. Um, a lot of times uh, uh, folks will um, take off uh, if it's a watch or something. Um, they, they can remove that and you don't know where they are. So the... The, the next slide is um, some other examples of that. Again, the, the shoe insert, a medical word tag with information inside of it, uh, a pendant, something you can wear. There's you know satellite coverage. It can uh, track somebody. A lot of these wearable devices have 
uh, accelerometers on them so they uh, they can track a fall if someone takes a fall and can notify you the new Apple watches are uh, pretty amazing uh, they do that they they can do uh, blood oxygen levels uh, they can uh, track people where they go uh, always something to consider and a lot of them have by these devices that like watches and whatnot have ways to uh, lock on so that people can't take them off either accidentally or on purpose the next slide I uh, just want to remind you that, you know, there's all kinds of uh, security, personal home security uh, uh, lighting that could be controlled, Google Home and the um, Amazon and Echo devices on the next slide. And this is uh, where the North Carolina Assistive Technology Program can come in handy because they can uh, discuss this and walk you through how to set up a lot of these different kinds of services. Certainly you can <coughs> purchase these types of devices at uh, electronic store, Best Buy, uh, Geek Squad will come out and will uh, install all these items for you uh, if you don't feel you have the capacity to do that. Um, uh, the next can we, can couple, we, what? Can we jump in for a minute? Jump away. Thanks, Bob. A couple of things. If you'd offered people to call you. How should they reach you, Bob? Because you, you're such a wealth of information. Uh, um, how, how should people reach you? Uh, you could uh, give them my, on their chat, you could give them my web or my email, which is tico13 at aol.com. The AOL lets you know how long I've been doing this. I'm kind of a Luddite. I don't have nine different emails. And then. And Bob, is that T I C O or 013? O. T I C O. Okay, gotcha. And then my phone number is 703 400 1031. Thanks, Bob. And, and then know, one more quick question regarding some of those wearable technology items like that the, the shoe inserts with GPS. If people were searching, what kind of terms should they put in a search engine to, to find information? Um I, I probably wandering, Alzheimer's, wandering, dementia, wandering. Um, okay. Or they can call me and we can search together. All right. Because I was learning, I, to be honest with you, every time I, I kind of go over my presentation before a, a new one, there's three or four things that I find out. I'm always learning. This is an exciting area to, uh, to be involved in because it's always changing. And people are addressing these, these needs. Uh, there's a a group in um, uh, it's a caregiver uh, foundation and every year they sponsor a competition with a uh, number like five or ten uh, univer university based teams and they pair each team with a caregiver over a weekend and the outcome is to develop an app either for smartphones or internet uh, that addresses a caregiver concern that's a it's a there's cash prizes and it's a pretty interesting thing when you think back to 2010 there were zero apps out there and now they're two billion uh, they're exactly. always changing and you know there's probably some 12 year old now that's working to develop the next best thing for these things um, thank you Bob. I'll see you later. Yeah. Don't step away too far. I'm almost done. The, the torture is almost over. Just to some of the other things. These are just, um, again, different home security systems that are available. This is the Ring Home Security Estimates. The next slide is, um, I think, you know, it's simply safe. And then ADT is the next slide. And there's just any number of uh, 
these services and some of them some of them are, are if you don't want to uh if you want to do the monitoring yourself this is a company you can pay to have the services monitored they do location and uh respond and you know just a quick aside back in the day when my mom was by herself and, and older uh we got her the life alert was the only thing that was available and she was kind of a, you know, she always was busy cleaning. So, you know, she's dusting around and then went to take the trash outside and all these emergency vehicles uh, show up because she had pressed the base unit alarm inadvertently. Uh, so that, that it helped me. I would relax because I knew they would respond almost instantly. And they, they did what they were supposed to do. And it's just getting... I can't tell you the peace of mind because, you, you know, everybody worries if you're not right there, whether it's, you know, you're doing errands or you're in another room, you know, things happen. So this is just a way to kind of relieve everybody's uh, process. This is uh, this theoric care is just I urge you to, to look at this website. They just have uh, products, uh, programs that that provide kind of remote access. Uh, just, just be aware you click on some of these sites and there's always a little helper that pops up a little virtual assistant in the corner and they're kind of insistent that they want to, to help you but it's worth looking at these things because you know you may not need it now but you might need it in the future you know it's my my family wants to make sure that I have all these training slide decks in a place where they can reach them when I get to where I need help. Um, and that's it. The last slide is just kind of just to remind people the 12 seasons, everything changes and then it doesn't change. But I thank everybody for their, uh, their time and attention. Uh, at the end of this, uh, there's a, uh, these are listed just, as I was going through, I just would uh, copy the the link and just put it down. There's many, many more. Uh, and if, if something comes up that you're interested in I'd, I'd, and, and has application, I'd love if you'd share it with me because, again, it, it can only uh, help other people if people know about it. So I thank you. And if there are any questions or if I've confused anybody, I apologize. <laughs> Bob, this has been great as always. And um, Rebecca, if you could pop up Bob's contact information again, that would be great. I mean, he, he Bob has so much experience, y'all. And if you have questions, he, he will respond to you. And thank you for that offer, Bob. Um, very, I'm very, very lonely helpful. with COVID, so I like <laughs> to have people call me. <laughs> you heard it here. So, so I don't, um, and Rebecca will pop up if there are any more questions. And Ruth wants to pop in too. Ruth from the Land of Sky Regional Council. There we go, Ruth. Hey, Bob. I was just wondering if we'll be able to share your slides with the caregivers if you're okay with that. I um, really appreciate it. That stuff's proprietary and. Okay. Uh, but. Here's the thing. It changes so much okay. that I'd welcome the opportunity to uh, just respond to a question and then develop a whole search with the person based on the specifics. Yes, that'd be more individualized. So what I'll do is I'll send them to this uh, presentation and give them your contact information. Thank you. Excellent. That's great. That's perfect. Perfect. Awesome. Awesome. So thank you, Bob. As always, you always have something new and interesting to share with us. And I picked up a few things today that you haven't shared before. So clearly there's all sorts of new technology coming out. And as a, a new Apple Watch wearer, I, I know how these things work now. So it's getting pretty interesting. Thank you. For those of you who are watching later on after the live presentation, please feel free to reach out to Bob Krollman. Wonderful information. Thank you. We are so excited that you all have joined us for this, our third presentation in this second series, Harnessing Tech to Connect. 
And Bob really shared a whole lot of information with us on remote caregiving or caring while you're away. And as he mentioned, there's still so much more there. Bob is Bob's focus is generally what is the simplest, least expensive, most effective, most safe option out there before we're getting too high in the technology realm. So you can see that from the presentation. So uh, thank you again, Bob. And look down in the chat room on whatever platform you're viewing, Facebook or YouTube, and there is a link to a survey. We very much welcome your feedback. Please um, share your thoughts and perspective. And that enters you into a door prize drawing. And we have some wonderful things to share with you, including pocket talk hearing devices, digital and talking thermometers, robotic pets, and um, door alarms. Bob shared some of the door alarms with you today. So thank you for that. And one more shout out to our Mayhex Social Bridging Project with senior interns at UNC Asheville. Thank you, Rebecca. Um, please, if you want to be a recipient of this service or you want to know more about it, there's an email for you, socialbridge at unca.edu or the um, phone of 828-771-3445. So on behalf of the Land of Sky Regional Council's Family Caregivers Program, AARP of North Carolina in the Mountain Region, Four Seasons of Care You Trust, the Charles George VA Medical Center, Bob Krollman with Skyheart Consulting and the Mayhex Social Bridging Project. We want to thank you very much for joining us for this third installation in our series. We hope you've learned something and hopefully you've seen how each of the presentations has had a very su substantial theme interwoven in particular with the remote support for those of you who are caregivers out there. A big shout out to Ruth Price who just joined us from the Land of Sky Regional Council for uh, leading this effort and for Rebecca Chaplin also behind the scenes with AARP of uh, the mountain region of, in here in North Carolina for being the driver of our series. Thank you all very much and best of luck to you in your caregiving ventures and journeys. Bless you much. Bye now.